Dennis Hearing, Amerifirst Financial Mortgage. I'm hosting today Rob Flick, Brian Coolhane, and Jay Nyo for an incredible mastermind on top talent attraction. Buckle up, get your notebooks ready. Let's get started. I'm not sure what they call it. It's a Panama hat, but the Panama hats are actually made in Ecuador. Yeah, interesting. We're, uh, we're doing a little event at a speakeasy in Vegas, so uh, you ha you'll have to bring that hat. It'll fit right in. I have four of them. <laughs> we'll bring you one. I do. I'm Get actually shopping for them. Look. Depending on the color of my socks, I have four different color hats. Nice. <laughs> you make it look good. Yeah. I don't know that I'll ever look as good as you, though. I mean, I don't uh, like nice stop. cold, freezing water. See, look, I'm not even kidding. I was looking up fedoras, fancy fedoras. <laughs> so. <laughs> Gotta story. get one in each color. <laughs> Funny. The Humphrey Bogart. I'm looking at the Humphrey Bogart collection. Humphrey Bogart. Nice. Well, this hey, is Dennis. one of the biggest months we've ever Brian? had. I think this is a very big, exciting month. Yeah. What's going on? I'm yeah, for numbers, for agents joining, for sales, for red share, everything is. I think this month is going to be a record best for anything we've ever had. Nice. Wow. Yeah, Rob, for some reason, I don't know if it's more just more me, more. but Rob, Rob's audio sounds a little muffled to me, Dennis. Are you getting that same thing? A little bit. Yeah. That's because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, you let the truth out now, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, I'm tired. I got so many calls. I'm, I'm, uh, just nipping at the edge of 17,000 agents in seven levels. Wow. Kind of exciting, yeah, really, yeah. isn't it? That's why yeah, I got different colored hats. You'll be there by the end of this uh, Zoom call. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> my goal is 20,000 by the end of the year. Oh, good for you. Sweet. Well, that's why Dennis has you on today. I'm just here to learn. I, I, you know, I brought I my notebook. I just want from you, dude. You got people, you know, playing in jets and, and uh, taking your picture in jets. I'm actually looking at a jet. Can you believe that? I'm, uh, I do believe that. I'm saying I'm looking. Right now, all I'm doing is looking. Gene is over in Europe picking up a boat. I'm just, you know, looking. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather have a jet than a boat. Uh, well, you know what? The parties are shorter. <laughs> which is sometimes that's a good thing yeah. <laughs> it's like my mom's uh old boss mr lavin uh, the billionaire owner of alberto culver he had the best lines he would say uh here's your hat what's your hurry you know right. or he'd be like here's your coat you know uh what's your hurry so uh you know that that always cracked me up it did. How come oh, these people all need to be on their video? Turn on your video because so we can see what you all look like. Ah, oh, there you go. Us, we want to be forced to look at you. Laying it down. By the way, are my uh, flags backwards or forwards? I can never tell on these things. No, it looks good now. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm funny looking. I'm gonna leave mine out. I'm gonna leave mine out. All right. Your banner ad, Dennis. Oh, those are banner ads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Shameless plugs, man. <laughs> I'm funny looking. I'm gonna keep mine off. Yeah, All right, thanks, Paula. We can look at a house no matter what it looks like and can see what it can be. We can transfer that skill to people, no problem. Yeah, that's what I do. You guys want to hear a funny ba banner ad story. So none of us would even be here today if it wasn't for a banner ad, right? So just to give you a little historical. So Glenn got into the real estate business because he was creating banner ads. He, he had created a community portal in Bellingham and it was getting a lot of traffic. And uh, so, so, so people wanted to start to advertise. So he would also offer a service of creating ads for them. And one of the ads he sold was to a, a kind of a retiring real estate broker, although that doesn't exist, right? A retiring <laughs> real estate broker. But, uh, but this guy was kind of on his way out of the business, whether by choice or not. And uh, he basically said, hey, Glenn, this ad is kicking so much butt and creating so many leads. And I don't know how to close these internet, these fancy internet leads, right? Do you need to get your real estate license and come and come help me close these leads? And Glenn was like, I'm not doing it. You know, I just, I don't want to be in real estate. I don't want to wear my realtor pin around town. I don't want to sit in open houses. I don't want to do any of it. And uh, 
you know, ultimately the guy goes, well, you know, I think Glenn put out an objection of like, I could get paid $60 an hour doing computer programming. And the guy goes, I'll pay you to study for your real estate test. So he literally paid Glenn $60 an hour to study for his real estate test. So if wow. it wasn't for a banner ad, <laughs> you wouldn't, we wouldn't be shopping for jets. <laughs> That's pretty incredible, really. Yeah. Wow. Good story. That is a great story. So that might be my best contribution today. Otherwise, let's let's tune into the Rob Flick and get some golden nuggets I, here. I can tell you part of my can't tell you the whole thing, but I tried to avoid Gene Frederick living, visiting him in his lake house for a week. I he kept saying, I gotta have something to show you. And I avoided him successfully for six and a half days. He finally wrestled me down and he showed it to me, but I almost made it the whole week not being interested. <laughs> Almost Six and a half days, right? Good. You know, it would, it would have been a bad look though for, if you had gone the full seven days. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Life would be a lot different. Season. You know, I remember that story. I remember the way you guys told it. You said, uh, you know, you looked at the model over a cigar and some some whiskey, some nice whiskey, and uh, you guys took one look at the model, looked at each other, said, "This thing's going to take over real estate, whether we join or not." And you guys both joined. Yes, that's exactly right. And it was a bottle of scotch and four cigars. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, you guys were started, tuned up. <laughs> I got the gist. <laughs> and it was a raining, it was definitely a rainy night. We were on his porch. He didn't have any paper, but he had about 30 napkins. And um, we started at 11.30 and he finished at 4.30 a.m. after the bottle was gone, cigars were gone. I was beat to a frazzle. And I said, this is really incredible if what I think I saw is true. <laughs> and the funny thing is, he didn't number the napkins. And the wind blew them all over the place. So I didn't know what kind of order to talk about this. Oh, my God. That's it was, it was hey, one of so the I craziest guess, presentations ever. So, Rob, what you're saying is to get a, to get a big whale, to land a whale, you got to get him really drunk. <laughs> keep them up real late and then they'll eventually say yes <laughs> yeah you'll wear them down what happened was the information was so incredible we just couldn't stop talking and and we we really said if this really is true i mean we had a hard time believing it was true but we said if this really is true this is this is we we figured easily 10 20x of what we had both done at keller williams so we saw this and said if that's the case, um, it's, it's, uh, and it turned out to be true. It's more than 20 times better. Gene and I have looked at our numbers all the time, and the money we make at Keller literally is 20 times as much at EXP for the same deal. It's because we're off the top, instead of after expenses and lying, we, you know, when people play with the system, if you will, owners and running up expenses, um, because this is off the top as part of the expenses instead of after the expenses, um, it made for we could literally know what we we're going to, what we're going to get. And so it was, yeah, really very, very exciting. And I'm, I'm more than happy to talk and chat about that. One of the things I always, have we started, Dennis? Are you waiting to say welcome, everybody? Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Robert Flick. Thank you. Yeah. The, uh, what's really interesting, I will tell everybody right up front what I would recommend you do if you haven't already seen it. I've got a couple of videos on YouTube, and, and I would recommend you watch them over and over and over again. Brent Go had his people watch these videos over and over and over again before he let them talk to his people. And one, one, one of them, if you go to YouTube and you search Rob Flick Wealth Chart Training, Rob Flick Wealth Chart Training, it's about 25 minutes long and it shows an agent how to go from zero to a half a million dollars a year in revenue share in three years, four hours and a week using the system the average, that we created. And it shows scripts and dialogue what to do, what not to do, um, really attitudes and, and what we did month by month that first year. We actually created you know, the basis for a half million a year in seven months. But what we showed was how it could be done in three years by the masses of agents 
And, um, and now we've had lots and lots and lots and lots of agents who have done that and more. That's a really great thing. The ideas, scripts and dialogues and attitudes are all current. The numbers are way bigger now, but that's an excellent video. The other video, uh, Brent Go um, hired a professional crew, a TV crew, to, to uh, film me doing a talk for about five or 600 of his agents a couple of years ago. And it's 90 minutes long. And he said, it's absolutely pure gold. And what he would do was he would take that video and he would get 40, 50, 60 agents at a time or however many would show up. And he would show that video about 15 minutes or 20 minutes of it at a time. Then they'd stop and they had pizza and beer and stuff. And they would stop and they would discuss it. And then they would watch another 15 or 20 minutes, turn it off, and they would discuss it. And he said it was probably the best video he'd ever seen on, on uh, attitudes, scripts, and dialogues, and, and how to talk to people with every kind of... Um, Rob, is that the uh, Rob Flick 101 one? Is that the what with 14,000 views? It could very well be. I'm not sure if it says Rob Flick 101. But. Or one one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I just put both of those in the text chat for everybody that wants to... Okay. And I remember the very first time I met Brian and we had a talk over uh, wine, I think it was, up on the top of some hotel sometime. Remember that conversation oh, I, with Brian? It's etched in my brain tissue. Oh, yeah, sure. It really is. Rob, I tell that. You want, you want me to tell the story or you want to tell yeah, the story? Yeah, you go ahead. Right, hang on, wait. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Colhane. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. So this really, guys, uh, and I'll prove it to you how important this moment was in my life. I actually just referenced this moment not too long ago. I'd say there's been, you know, maybe a handful of truly transformative experiences in my life. You know, meeting Glenn Sanford off the Craigslist ad, being number one. Um, you know, recently getting a chance to spend a couple hours with Grant Cardone on his private jet. And actually before that, it was actually sitting in his office going through my financial, you know, literally spreadsheet, line by line assets, expenses. I mean, the guy broke me down like a financial chiropractor, but I would also put, um, and also Troy Casey and Wim Hof, but I would put Rob Flick running into Rob Flick randomly at a rooftop uh, uh, a party uh, it wasn't random, by the way. It was, it, it, and I want, I want to know Rob's version after I tell my version or at least what was going through his head because I got a lot of questions. But I will prove to you how transformative this is. I actually took notes. So I still have my notes. They're the Rob Flick notes. And uh, I've added to them over the years, but this is pretty much the actual notes that I took. And I'm happy to read these, Dennis, because they're pretty powerful. Bring but it on, I, brother. Not only did I take these notes, but I right. started taking the notes in real time. But let me set the stage. So we had just done the first probably shareholders event ever in Bellingham, Washington. Um, you know, for those of you who know me, Brian Colhane, for, uh, for those of you who don't, I was uh, the first president of EXP, one of the founding members. I, uh, I, I've been working with Glenn Sanford for 17 years. I've been one capacity or another. I was his team leader at Keller Williams. I was a, a branch office manager here for buyer tours in Phoenix when he was running a traditional brokerage. Um, I've been the national lead manager, the cloud janitor, uh, whatever you needed me to cloud do, I did janitor. it. And uh, after was well, some some of my mentors say after you know 17 years of digging ditches, I'm an overnight success. And so, uh, but I've been a struggling real estate agent just like everybody else that starts in real estate. I was struggling very much well into even EXP, um, and uh, it was actually probably what was it 2015, Rob, or something like that. Uh, 2016. So, 2015, 2016. Um, we had just not we just gone public in 2013, but it took us a full year to really be active, and then and, and then it took us another year to be able to offer stock awards. So this was right around the time where we were able to offer stock awards for the for 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 certain events, and so we had our big shareholders meeting, first ever shareholders meeting, and I actually went to that meeting with a with a broken mindset. I I, I literally still was struggling. I still felt poor. I mean, it wasn't even until Glenn like, like pulled me aside and goes, Brian, do you realize? Because he gave me a lot of stock options, you know, millions of stock options, and they were worth 12 cents. And when I got the package, I was literally, I was upset. I was like, this sucks, like 80 grand or 100 grand, like that's it? Like that's all I got for working? Like I was so ignorant to 
to what that even meant and the potential. And it took guys like Rob, who really are numbers people. I mean, that's really Rob's magic is he, is he, he just thinks of numbers. Everything's a number. He just chops it up. He reorganizes it. He, you know, writes it out. He measures it out, does it on napkins, does it on calculators. That's his whole MO is numbers. And he's a master of leverage too, by the way. And he's got some amazing stories that I hope he tells today, you know, making grilled cheeses at, uh, at uh, the Air Force Academy, Rob, right? Or uh, let's keep it to the meeting that we had up on the gotcha. So, so Rob, <laughs> literally, uh, someone tried to introduce me to him and say, "Hey, did you know Rob Flick was here?" And I was kind of like, "Well, I heard of him, but I didn't know really much about Rob." But you know, for those that know, Rob uh, actually was also very, very integral, if not dare I say, the the inventor of the game that we're even playing because he had already done this for Keller. Um, he, he literally taught the entire Keller Williams company how to do this uh, attraction business. So he, Rob is really the, the inventor of the game we're all playing. And so, um, so I didn't know who, who he was, though. And someone said, hey, you got to meet this guy. Well, anyways, we're sitting on a rooftop deck. It's me, Ray Marquez, and uh, I think Bob Hayes and uh, somebody else were just kind of sitting there, Ricky Tucker. And Rob comes over and he goes, hey, is this chair taken? And I said, no, absolutely. Have a seat. And he goes, great. And he takes the chair and he goes to another table with it. <laughs> and we're all just like, what the? I'm like, we're, heck are we? God, we're losers, right? We're at the losers table, I guess. And, uh, and then about two minutes later, I look up and Rob's standing in the empty seat. And he starts talking to me and he starts going, hey, so you're the top guy, huh? And I'm like, well, kind of, you know, I've been doing this, you know, whatever. I'm making making decent money. I was making like three or four grand. I probably had a hundred people in my organization, you know, I've been doing it six years, but I was also the president and the chief culture. I'm doing some other stuff, but I was, you know, I should have been taking more advantage of the model, but I didn't even know that. And so Rob starts kind of, first he was all nice. And, you know, you know, Rob, he's got the big smile and he puts you right at ease. And then all of a sudden he starts going, well, like, what's your problem? And I'm like, what do you mean? What's my problem? He's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, what's your problem? He's like, you, know, you should be killing it. You, know, you should be making hundred grand, you know, ten grand a month or something. You know, you throw out some number at me. He's like, you should be making fifty grand a month. If you're not making fifty grand a month, you're not a player. You know, so you've been you've been the first guy in. He's like tall, good looking. If you can't do it, nobody can. Now listen, he didn't say good looking. I added that just to make myself feel better. He definitely said something Aww. like that, and uh, he was like, listen, Brian, you're holding everybody back. He goes, if you can't do this, none of us can do this. He goes, I need you making. You know, I think you said something like, I need you making a million a year so I can be making five million a year. <laughs> That's what he said. And I was like, holy. Crap. So then this is all true, folks. So first, then he starts kind of throwing out some golden nuggets. And I was like, almost like we were playing fungo, like or like, uh, you know, like he had his uh, batting practice bat out. And he's like, go ahead, toss me a couple. And I was like, what about 100 percent commission? And he's like, no, splits never comes up. I'm like, what do you mean it never comes up? He's like, yeah, it never comes up. And so basically, let me just read you the notes because this is gold. This is all this is gold. So he basically, again, master of leverage, you know, uh, the stuff that Rob's done in his career is mind blowing, you know, top gun fighter pilot, uh, you know, uh, just an amazing guy. So he starts saying, hey, you know, this model is 20 to 25 times more lucrative than the Keller Williams model. He goes, I recruited 40,000 agents to Keller. If I had that same people here, he goes, I'd be making what something like 20 million a year. He said, then uh, his pitch to top agents, he said, something is coming in real estate. Just so you are aware, I don't want you to look uninformed. I don't want you to appear to be flat footed, right? He'd say, get me together with your accountant, your lawyer and your wife. And if you don't have an accountant and a lawyer, then you're probably not the guy I want to be talking to, <laughs> right? So he's just peppering us with these awesome <laughs> golden nuggets. You know, say to your broker owner, I'm giving you first shot at your own agents, Right. And so, again, I'm writing down notes and people started laughing at me, Rob, like they were kind of like, what are you doing? Taking notes. And I'm like, no, you guys don't understand. This guy's putting gold coins in our ears. You need to be paying attention. And before you know it, Rob, and tell me I'm lying. We had probably 20 people, three rows deep, brought me and Rob on this rooftop, you know, pizza parlor in Bellingham, Washington. And everybody's listening to what Rob was saying. By the end of it, people were literally like, hey. Could you send me those notes? <laughs> and I said, if I was Rob Flick, I'd charge you for it. But go ahead, Rob. Is that do I have that right? <laughs> no, you have it. Yeah, really pretty close. And I think I may have said you were good looking, or at least you were making an attempt. <laughs> well, hey, you know that's it's the ice water, you know. I know. You know? I will tell you, in building this, I believe it's all about attitude, and it's not like I'm holier than thou kind of attitude. It's just 
what I call quiet confidence. If you know confidently that we have the best deal there is, period, nothing, end of story so far to date, doesn't mean it will be that way forever, but we are right now. And having been through three or four different companies to know what it's like, we have the best thing. And the truth always comes out, right? I always know that if you deal with somebody, I know that some people have to see it two or three or four times. Some people haven't had enough pain in their life. Mostly what I'm looking for is the pain. I want to know their real estate pain. I want to know their life's pain because we have the fix. Most people do not go towards, um, towards good. They go away from bad. And, and yes, there are those that go towards good, yes. But most people, the masses of asses, as we call them, they actually go away from pain, right? And so I'm always asking questions. I never talk about myself if I can help it. I always like to have a wingman like Brian. Brian's very good at being a wingman. He's also good at being the front man. It doesn't matter. I don't know if he could ever be, you know, the, what do they call it? The straight man. Because you know he's got so much knowledge, he can't hold it in. But what I what I have found is that I want to ask every question I possibly can of these people, so I get to know them, their strengths, their weaknesses, what they think of their business, where they think it's going, how much longer they want to be in real estate, um, why they're in real estate, why aren't they aren't doing something else? What is it about real estate that attracts them? What is it about real estate? I can't read that. What is it about real estate? I'm, just saying, I'm taking notes, Rob, and I'm telling okay. you folks, if you're not writing down 95% of what Rob says, because here's the reality. Everything he says is scientifically proven in labs and data tested out in the field. And I yeah. mean, every word is chosen so carefully, it's mind-blowing. It really is. I've, I've practiced with thousands and thousands of agents really all the time. I have foot rule. In other words, I, I question and, and almost drive down uh, answers on everybody that gets within three feet of me. And I just want to know about them, their life. What do you do? How long have you been doing it? Do you still love doing it? Why do you do it? Why don't you do something else? Have you, and if they seem like they're successful or do, I said, what, have you ever considered real estate? I'm always looking for people to put into real estate too. And I used to just go out and look for realtors. You know, those are the only people I could talk to. But one of the biggest things I learned from one of my guys, um, Wilco Raviston, um, who, is a, who used to be a soccer coach, right? He told me, why are you constantly looking for realtors? He said, because, you know, there's, there's not everyone. But if you ask people, do they know a realtor? Everybody knows a realtor. And I go, oh, why? Wow. He said, yeah, that makes every single person a prospect. And what I learned was the more successful the person was, the more successful the realtors they knew. Just like I asked Brian, do you have an accountant? Do you have a lawyer? Do you have a doctor? Do you have a realtor? Do you have a yard person? Do you have a house cleaner? If you don't have those things, you're not what I consider on the success route. You know, I mean, maybe you're getting there, but those are clues, in my opinion. It doesn't mean you can't be successful without that, but very few people have that that are not successful. And I realized that the more successful they were, the more successful the realtor was that they referred to me. And I, I realized that if I talk to a homeless person, they're going to refer me to a homeless realtor. I'm not going to be able to do anything with that one, right? So I'm looking for people who are up and running and I don't have to teach them. And I, and I didn't want to waste my time because I'm older, all right? And I said, I don't have the time to waste training newbies. I want to find people who are already going, moving forward. They can train newbies. Newbies are going to be the future, no question. But I didn't have time to make, to wait. I had to make money now. And so that's what I wanted to do. So I was looking for people who were already doing it. And I would say, how long have you been doing what you've been doing? Right. And I say, are you still as excited today as you were the first day you ever started doing what you're doing? However many years later, how much, how many more years do you want to do that? What's your exit plan? When are you, you repeat that, Rob, you repeat that opening line. Are you as, are you what? Repeat that opening line, you, that intro line. Are you as excited as you are doing today? What you repeat that? For I us. have short term memory. Remind me what it was again. All right. Are you excited doing what right. you're doing today? Yeah, yeah. Are you excited? Are you? Did you brush your teeth today? I want to know <laughs> what. No, I said. Are you as excited today about whatever it is you are doing? But I have to be specific. They've told me what they are, what they do. So I say, let's say they're an architect. Are you as excited today about being an architect as you were the very first day you showed up day one? 
And do you, do you get out of bed going, man, I love what I'm doing. There's nothing else I would rather be doing today than this. And if you can't say that, then we have to work. Uh, and that's a pain point. In other words, how much longer do you want to do this? Where do you see it going? What is your exit plan? What is your workout? You know, how are you going to end it? How are you doing on putting together your retirement life? Right. And so I would ask him, okay, cool. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being incredible, one being suck. I said, what grade would you give your business life today? And they would tell me. And I would say, okay. And I would repeat it back to them. And then I would say, what would make it a 10 plus? If you had this, that's a, that's a seven or eight. What would make it a 10? And I said, well, a 10 would be blah, blah, blah. They would tell me. I say, okay, that's a 10. Most of the time, they just want to make a little more money. Realtors say they want to sell more houses. So when realtors tell me a 10 would be selling more houses, I say to them, so does that mean that you just want to work harder? It sounds like you just want to work more. And they say, well, no. I said, what does what selling more houses mean to you? And they say, making money. I said, well, why didn't you say that? I mean, don't disguise it as, you know, selling houses. Just say, I want to make more money. And I said, okay, well, you don't have to sell more houses to make more money. You just have to work smarter. There's a lot of income streams available in the real estate industry. It sounds to me like you haven't, you know, grabbed hold of them. If you wouldn't be offended, I'd be happy to explain a couple of them to you, you know? And so I learned- Rob, you, yeah. you told it to me like this too once. He goes, so he goes, well, if a 10 is making more money, what's a 10 plus? And they go making more money and working less. And Rob will go, that's amazing. You know, you know, I'm, you know what I'm in the business of? I'm in the business of helping agents make more money and work less. It's amazing <laughs> that we're meeting right now. Like this yeah, is unbelievable, exactly. right? Like, <laughs> yeah, my goal was to get them dreaming. You're right, Brian. And I would say, what's your plus? And they would tell me that mostly making the same money, not working as much. And I'd say, well, what I want them to say, making money, not working. I'm dying. I'm trying to get them to say Yeah, that. you're leading them down the path. That. You're getting you them. Get them you're, they get as close as they can to that. Now, remember, I'm saying this to anybody I meet. They don't know me. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I do. Right. And so what they would say to me is, what is it that you do? Who are you? What do you do? And I say, I'm the guy that teaches people how to get their 10 plus business. Yes. And, I also, and I also say that, and I don't tell them that unless they ask me, because if they don't ask me, they're not interested. I want to see them vibrate and get excited. I'm looking for people who are looking, right? I want to be, I mean, they're searching, they're looking, they're aggressive. They want to do something. That's who I'm looking for. Because if I'm going to go into battle, I want the best generals I can possibly have, right? I don't want guys that are going, should we start now? Oh my God, what do you think? No, let's wait. No, go to today, talk to them. Boom, go, go see them, you know, now. People, why I, I, I don't tell them, when people postpone on me, it's not their problem. It's their fault, but it's not my problem. I'm on a different time frame than they are. So that means I've got to fill my time, sometimes double book, because I found some people cancel, believe it or not. Some people say, yeah, sure, I'll meet you and never show up. So I don't want to have that time wasted. And my goal is then to say, what is your, what about your 10, what about your life? On a scale of one to 10, this gets really, you're, I only do this if they have great energy and they're talking back and forth with me. If they don't have great energy, then it's like, run away, run away. I don't want to hang out and talk to them. If their energy sucks and they're, they're just, oh, I feel drained talking to them. I don't want to talk to them. I want to feel better. I want them to feel better after they've talked to me, right? So I would say, okay, I got a real cool question, you know, to, to about your life. What do you mean? I said, well, the scale of one to 10, the perfect life being 10, the life sucks like you can't believe it. Uh, a one, what grade would you give your life today? That's really opens their eyes. Most people say six or seven. And I say, what would make it a 10? They start describing all kinds of stuff, you know, and I go, that's awesome. And I repeat it back to them. I said, what would make it a 10 plus? And they tell me what would be even better, like my life, oh my God. And I said, well, here's a great question. Have you ever sat down and figured out what it would cost to finance your 10 plus life? And they go, no, never have. I said, well, you, you put a number to it and I can show you how to get it. And I said, if I can help you get a 10 plus life, we'll be friends forever. And they go, well, yeah, you would. And I said, is it worth 20 minutes of your time and a cup of coffee? I've done it for a lot of people. Or I would say my mentors do it to a lot of people. If I haven't achieved it, or you feel like you can't do it yourself because your ego isn't there, your self-image isn't strong enough, right? Then you say, my mentor puts it together. Would it offend you if I had, if I was able to get you together with my mentor? 
who that's all that he does day and night. And he'll meet with you free of charge based on my say so. So wait. Right? Because people always think, how much is that going to cost me? It's not going to cost you anything. But I will show you how it can be done. And I've, and I've been able to create, I said, understand this. I said, whatever you do, I think it's great. But if I had to do what you do, it would be a giant pay cut for me. And I couldn't handle that. Right? I mean, why would I want to live on less? I don't want to know anything you know about making money. You should be begging me to know what I know. Yeah. And if you're not begging me, you don't understand what I know. So let me explain to you what I know, tell you my lifestyle. Look at me at, look at, you know, I used to post a lot of things on Facebook. I really don't do it anymore because I don't want to be a target. All of a sudden, when you start making way too much, you become a potential target. And now I'm having conversations with security people. <laughs> like, it's like, really? Yeah, well, you're going to Panama. You're going to, you know, Brazil. You're going to these different countries where life is different than what we're used to in Scottsdale, Arizona, Brian, right? I get it. And so, I mean, it's like everybody's not as happy as you are about your success in other parts of the world sometimes. You got to learn to be cool. You got to learn, you know, to start thinking about things I never thought about before. I never did it. Well, actually, Robin, to that point, one of the greatest gifts you've ever given me was turning me on to your asset preservation and protection companies that yeah. you worked with. And that was a huge tip. And I've done a lot with those folks. And, you know, I was just going to ask you to repeat that line because there's, there's, it's very strategic. And when you say, have you ever calculated what it would cost to invest in giving yourself a 10 plus lifestyle? And then, then do you say, I can show you, or do you say, if I can show you? What, what no, was I say to them, what would it cost you to finance your 10 plus life? Everybody has a number. If you decide everything that you want to do and be, you want to live on, a, on an island by the beach. Okay, that can be done. You want to be able to have a boat. You want to be able to go hunting. You want to be able to travel. You want to spend time with your family. You want to, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, you want like to be able to give money to your school, whatever it is that you want to do, you want to pay your parents' house off. There's all kinds of things that you would like to do if life was perfect. What would it cost to finance that? And I said, believe it or not, I can show you how to finance that. And I'm, and I'm willing to do it. That's what I do. That's my joy. My joy is helping people finance their 10 plus life. And I don't publicize it and I don't do things, but I've helped literally hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of people to have their 10 plus life. And then I have, once they get their 10 plus life, I got to go back and visit them and say, listen, there's more than 10 plus. There's 10 plus, plus, plus. Let's start talking about that. How can you do for others now? What, can you, what is your legacy going forward? What are people going to remember when you're not here? Once you've got things taken care of and what you're doing. I'm looking for high-minded big thinkers to drive a big organization. I could never have built an organization. I mean, supposedly I have somewhere around, I don't know, Brian, we can figure this out somehow, 40,000 agents overall of the 55 or 56 agents but only 17,000 of them were in my first seven levels. I don't get paid on the other 26,000, right? I mean, I'm excited they're there and they beef up and they make things right, but um, I couldn't get there by myself. Right. I had to have people who were um, generals in the making. I had the people who had high self images. I had to have people who were coachable and teachable. I had to have people that would take action. I had to have people that would um, talk to me and ask questions and, and want to get help. I, I had to have people that were willing to go get the information at some of these events that we we're putting on around the country and in different countries to go to travel to do that, to spend their time, money, and effort learning to be the best. I don't need to talk to 10,000 people if I've got 50 super winners because 50 super winners will get me 10,000 or 20,000. And when I first looked at this, the first thing, my first thought was, I'd like to have 500 people in three years. I'd like to enroll one Rob, person a month. You said that to me when I first met years. you. When I first my, met my, you. My big goal was to enroll, was to show one or two agents a week to enroll one or two agents a month. And I think I'm trying to be conservative. And I said, if I enrolled one agent every month, can I just made it part of the business? Not the only thing I did. I was still doing listing appointments. You know, when I was selling houses, my deal was, I did one or two listing appointments a week to get one or two listings a month. And those one or two listings a month got me one or two buyers a month on top of that. And that, that was my whole business plan. The only thing I did when I joined 
uh, both Calor and EXP was add one or two agents a month. Two buyers, two sellers, two agents a month. Two buyers, two sellers, two agents a month. Like Brent goes, says all the time, quit trying to sell more houses, sponsor more agents, continue selling, but put your time and effort into your future, right? Because selling is a great thing. Don't get me wrong. We all need to do it, right? It needs to be done. But you don't have to overdo it. Right, you can you make enough to cover your bills and your overhead and your family and pay what's necessary, but the rest of the time is building your future. I always heard from nine to five you make a living, from from five to nine you make a future. I've always been taught that from way way back when, right? And so it's that extra effort. And I say if you can take if you can find four hours a week, I can show you how to make a million a year. I can, I can show you down step by step by step how to do that. Now, whether you do it or not, it's totally up to you, right? You may be thinking, I, I can't handle a million a year. Okay, well, then let's just make you 100,000 a year. Let's start that, okay? Because your dreams aren't big enough yet. So let's just show you how to make 100 grand. And some people aren't even making 100,000. I have guys on my team now that were making under $100,000 a year that are now making half a million a year in rev share. And I had to get them mentally prepared to even accept that much money into their life. They just thought, I'll never do that. It could never be me. I and that poured out of, their, out of their pores, out of their being. When they talked to somebody, it just didn't show that they were solid and belief. And in my opinion, the belief you have in yourself is the biggest single thing you have. And I know, again, when I was saying, we have the best thing going. Nobody has what we have. And so I don't care what they say. I always have something to come back, right? I never let them have the last word because most of their words are trash. They don't know. They don't understand. And they said, well, you know what? I, I know all about it. I'm not interested. I said, no, you don't. They said, what do you mean? I said, you don't know all about it because if you knew what I do, you'd already be doing this. Right. <laughs> and you don't, obviously. I mean, I make millions. You don't. So I have buddies that make millions. You don't. I have buddies that have a million dollars in stock. You don't. What don't you understand about wanting to be rich, wealthy, and free? Very few of us can be good looking like Brian, but you can be rich, free, and you know, healthy, right? And they yeah. go, Well, yeah, I guess I don't want I want them to know I'm a rock. They cannot shake my tree. Period. End of story. Never happened. Drop the mic. <laughs> period, you know? And, it's all about attitude. It's and, and I'm look, and I said, really, truly, if you ever decide to go, and I said, I understand timing's everything. Timing is everything. And, and I just had a lady who does 100 transactions a year. I've been talking to her. She's the second person I ever talked to after Scott Lewis. Scott Lewis was the first person I ever talked to. Some of you may have heard of him. He's done very, very well. And then this other gal I talked to uh, was the second person I ever talked to. She does 100 deals a year. Um, I helped get her into Keller Williams years ago. And um, she's got a great business going. She makes a lot of money. She has no time and no life, hmm. right? And I've been talking to her for five years about it. She five, Two years ago, she filled a garage with EXP signs, but didn't even, but didn't pull it plug then. And then she moved into her house to start working out of her house to see if she could do that for a year. And finally, five years into it, she joins. So I just enrolled another... Um, uh, another icon agent, but it took five years second person for her to be able to do it. She was the second person I ever talked to. Wow. She's already lost. I figured out how much money she lost from the stock from being an icon for five years and for the amount of volume she does. To divide the stock at the time when it was a buck, a dollar twenty, dollar fifty, and on three and a half million dollars. Three and a half million dollars. Just the Icon Award alone in 2015, that $16,000 divided by 30 cents a share would have been over 100,000 shares today. That'd be close to 4 million, just right. from that one award. Think about that. It's, it's like unbelievable. And so, and I said, but you, it's okay, that's fine. It's not a big deal. You can still get started now. Why? Because now people are saying to me, oh, maybe it's too late. And I uh -huh. say, no, it's not. And I go through this deal. I said, we only have 50 or 60,000 agents right now. Okay, worldwide. We're throughout the United States, North America, Mexico, and 15 or 20 other countries. Do you know in North America, there's somewhere around 2 million agents? And that doesn't even count uh, Mexico, which we're into too. And around the world, I told, I'm told there's somewhere between 5 and 10 million. And we only have 50,000. 
We're we're just a little tiny bump yes, on sir. an asphalt. <laughs> we we're just getting started. Yes, we're big, we're powerful, we're moving, going, but we've just gotten started. What happens when we've been around for 25 years? What happens when we have 250,000 agents? I think we're going to approach 90,000 agents possibly by the end of the year. We'll Good add, job. Rob, 60, we'll 64, add 60, 85,000 agents maybe. Rob, we'll add more agents in the next 12 months than we added in the last 11 years. Well, you know, I believe that. You know why I believe that? I have the numbers of what I've done ever since I've been in. I've tracked every single number because, you know, I'm a numbers freak. I can't handle it. Oh, yeah. And I can show you exactly what's happened. And the interesting thing is, I have attracted more age, like last year was my biggest single, my set, my biggest single year for attracting agents for the group growing, right? And I thought it was pretty good. Right now, this year, I think, man, it just seems like things are going slow <clears throat> in my head, my, my vision of what's going on. I said, it should be really going bigger. But I just pulled out all the numbers and I realized already in five and a half months, I've had more agents join my team in the first five and a half months of this year than all year last year, which was a record setter. Wow. And I realized, wow, I guess it is going well. I just wish it would go faster. Can you believe that? I mean, here I am. I said, I want it to be 20. I, I wrote down when I first started that I want to have, five, my first goal was 500,000, right? To have, to have 500 agents doing a million or more, 500,000. And, but I wrote down my secret, I can't tell anybody goal because it's too out there was to have 30,000 agents in my first seven levels. And I realized I'm gonna have 30,000 agents next year. I'll be 20,000 this year and 50% I'm, I'm is not unusual, the growth of 50%. So- How important the, is goal setting, growing. Rob? How important is setting little number goals for ourselves? I think it's vital. I think, I think more importantly is setting goals for your activities. Right. Because you can't, I can't judge the results, I just know the action. I know if I expose this enough times, good things will happen. I'm looking for the right person. I'm looking for timing being right. You know, I'm looking well, something for- like, Something like make five inner real estate contacts a day. Like make that your goal, right? Yeah, that if you were right. selling houses, that'd be a great thing to do. That was, that was a lot for me because I've, I'm, I'm, I know this is hard to imagine, but basically I'm very shy. <laughs> Except when I'm in a crowd with a crowd, and then I'm very noisy. But other than that, I'm not. And so, yes, I would set a goal of the number of presentations you're going to do a week. Start there. When I started going, and I started really hitting it for about a year and a half, I really went hard. And my my goal was three presentations a day, six days a week. And the way I did that was, <clears throat> I didn't know that many agents, but when I met one. My favorite thing was 9, 10, and 11 o'clock. 9, 10, 11, and, and a winner at 1 o'clock. 9, 10, 9, 10, 11, and 1, right? And I would find a coffee shop like a, um, at the time it was a Panera Bread. That was one of my favorite ones. And I would sit at Panera Bread, and I would make an appointment for somebody at 9 o'clock. And I would show them the presentation. And if they were excited at all, I would say, who do you know that we can show this to right now? And they said, what do you mean? I said, Text this to 10 friends right now. Hey, Fred, this is Sal. I'm sitting here at Panera Bread on such and such a corner with a guy that just showed me the future of real estate and what it's all about. Is there any way you can pop in right now? And I said, text that message to 15 people that you know in real estate and see if one or two of them shows up. And many times, one of them would show up. And so I'd show them, I'd go to the present, introduce myself, show the presentation. And a lot of times that first guy was so excited that he stayed. So now he's seen it two times. And that first guy said, wow, this is really pretty interesting because now there's two of us that are excited. We overpower his negative, right? And so he would say, well, that's interesting. And when I got done, I'd say, is there anybody that you know in the area that you can send a text to that says, hey, I'm sitting here at Panera Bread with so-and-so and so-and-so. They've just showed me what's happening in real estate in the future. And believe me, buddy, you need to see this. Can you get your butt here? And send it, you know, send it like a friend. Get your butt here. Boom. Right? And, and someone would show up. That's three presentations. And the big bonus, you know, champagne, 
But afterwards, if I could fill that fourth one, but by then all three of them were texting to try and get people and we get four or five. And so there were many times when the people two and three deep that day joined when the first one did not. Wow. And I did that for 18 months. And that created the momentum to find the leaders, to find the generals who saw what I did, that they did it in their very own way. Just like Brian's change. Brian, if I believe, I would have to say, Brian, your activities, I'm guessing, have changed dramatically in the last several years since you and I have met. Thousand million percent. And, and the difference in what's happening with your business is staggering. Million, million, million plus percent. <laughs> no question. And, and so what I found is if you are pleasant, you are consistent, you're persistent, and you're pleasant about it, and you just keep going, eventually the little drips of water will, will erode the rock. But what I realized, Rob, was happens. this, is that you, you got to always have it on the brain. And you guys look at the world like that old Tootsie Roll commercial where the fire hydrant turns into a Tootsie Roll and the tree turns into a Tootsie Roll. And, and some of the, the golden nuggets I picked up from you, I actually paid Rob a, a staggering amount of money to train probably a, 50 of my leaders a few years ago. And, uh, you know, there were so many golden nuggets. It still blows me away that not everybody's still that saw what you show them is jacked up about it. That's why I was excited to do this with Rob because anytime I get a chance to soak up gold nuggets, I'm going to do it. But that absolutely taught me to basically everyone is a candidate, everyone in your life. And, you know, they, Rob's major, major golden nugget that he talked about today is asking them questions. You know, I remember when I ran into you and Gene at the, at the earlier at the, or a different time at the shareholders event, you guys were up on stage doing an attraction panel. And I remember saying, uh, you know, Gene, what's your secret? And he goes, I'm no better than everybody else. I just have more at bats than everybody else. And at some level folks, that's it. I mean, whoever swings the bat the most times is the best at it. You know, that's just how it works. And that applies to everything. I mean, a rod said at 10 X growth con, he goes, you know, he goes in the history of the world, I'm number four in strikeouts. And, you know, you got to think about that, right? He's also number two in home runs. right? You know, so in order to, you know, and, uh, and that's how these guys think. That's how guys like Rob think. They just go, it's a numbers game. At some point I used to make t-shirts, hashtag it's just math. But after I met you guys and after that weekend, I, John Lincoln will tell you, I didn't sleep for three days. I called everybody I knew. I was so excited. I got everybody around me excited again, you know, and, and that's all I do now. I just try and get my people, the leaders, you know, they you save the ones that are swimming to the boat first, you know, and uh, you know, I want to save everybody. I want to help everybody, but you know, like Rob did with his people, you, 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 you coach to the leaders, you know, the leaders will go out and find the generals. Yeah, that's very, very true. And my leader, my level of leadership has changed. Because before I used to find, if you, had, if you had 300 agents, you were one of my top people. If you had 300 on your team. Then it was if you had 500 on your team. Then it was if you have 1,000 on your team. Now I work with the people that have 2,500 or more on their team. And I have several teams that have that and more. You know, now, I, so in other words, they now have leaders beyond them too. If they've got 2,500, they probably have 50 leaders themselves that have 10 or 15 or 20, you know? And so what I found was I tell everyone big goal, shoot for 140 is nothing. Have in your mind, you want to get 100. In fact, my career, not this week, this month, my career is that 100 personal, right? If I have 100 person, like I've I've enrolled an average of two agents a month. I've enrolled 120 something agents in five years, two a month, almost exactly, right? 60 of those have quit. Can you believe it? They quit from the number one guy. What the hell's wrong with them? So anyway, <laughs> they quit. I call them up. Don't you know who I am? What some I'm doing? will be back though. There's some of them will come back. Yeah. Start and at the bottom. <laughs> 60 of them have quit, right? And of those 60, 10 of them, are responsible for 99% of all the agents, right? So it is, it's like I had to do 120 to find the 10 and I didn't know who the 10 would be. Hmm. 
And some people, they, I mean, I had, and then what I found was this, here's the downside of being really, really super successful. Once I got agents making 35 to 40,000 a month in revenue share, they disappeared. And if they were selling houses, they stopped selling houses. Huh. Because they're making 400, $500,000 a year, more than they've ever made. It's coming in whether they get out of bed or not. And they've hit their 10 plus. And they haven't thought, they, I lose them for a year or two. They show back after, and I thought, are they ever going to come back? But yes, they show back up after about a year or two. And they say, okay, I'm ready to go for a million a year. I want to be one of those million a year people. But, and, which is understandable. I had to learn that people want to smell and need to smell the roses along the way. You really do. My dad would say that all the time. He says, Rob, no matter how good you're doing, you got to smell the roses along the way. And if you can go dream building and you can take one of your leaders and go dream building with them, I would ask them what their dream is, what their dream car is, what their dream home. And I would cut pictures out of magazines and mail it to them <sighs> and say, I just was thinking about your dream car. I saw one the other day. Is this what you were thinking? I just want to keep their dream in front of them. You know, if they say they had the best resort they ever stayed at was such and such, I'd get pictures of that and say, do you want to go back again? Or once you've got 25 personals, hey, let's go to that resort for a couple of days. You know, something like that. And I would throw things out there for my team. I love incentives. I love people that will go for incentives, right? Because it makes them stretch a little bit more. I learned if you incentivize the activities you want to see, you'll see more of those activities. But Rob, it's not always high fives and back rubs with your team, right? I mean, I've seen you and getting in uh, Scott Lewis's face and say, how many agents do you have this week? How many are you going to have next week? I want you to commit to that, you know, not letting your agents off the hook. How important is that? Well, it's important only for those who can take it. Not everybody can take that. There were some of my people, like Brent was a perfect one. I mean, Brent, I loved it because he, you could mess with him so easy, right? And so I would go, man, if that's all you can have, geez, I guess we'll, and I'd turn around and walk away. You know, if that's the best you can do, Brent, um, all right, fine. And I'd leave and he would double. Boom, I'll show him. He just want, and now, you know, it's like he's got, he's, he's close to 12,000 agents now, I think. You know, he's getting, in, 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 which is exciting, you know, you know, to what's happened. And what's really interesting is, of those agents, I think only, I think I want to say 8,000 of those agents are part of my 17,000. So he's 50% of my team, even though he's got more, right? Because it only goes through seven levels and he's on my second level. I also will tell you this, if you want to build a really big team, the people you really want to spend the most time with are the people on your first three levels. Because it goes so fast to six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 15, before you even know it. You've got to get with. Width is very important. The more personals you have, the better. The more people on your second and third level, the better, because that just means it will be more and more and more, right? So I guess to rehash, you want to have in your mind that this is the greatest thing there is. You want to make it part of your business. It's the finishing part. The listing and sales of houses are how you pay your bills today, of how you finance your life today. The stock is your retirement potential for many, many people to give out that asset. Most people in the United States will never put away a million dollars. I believe it's very possible to gain a million dollars in stock eventually. I have faith that the stock's going to go way higher. When we've got a half a million agents, I think the stock is going to be better than it is today. That's just my opinion. I think when we have a million agents, it will be hard to guess where it is. That will happen. And I think if you work on it, that's part of your business to get as much stock as you can. I think that's a good thing. And don't worry about the up and down. If you're in for the long term, I believe it's a long term play. I'm not a stock guy. I don't have any background in it. But I will tell you, when we only had 800 agents, the stock was less than a buck. Now that we've got 50,000 agents, it's 30 to eight, it's 60 to 80 times higher than it was because we've already had one stock split. It wouldn't surprise me that sometime in the future we have another one. Whether we do or not, I don't know, but it, was, it wouldn't shock me at all. We've got to keep the price so that the masses can buy it. We don't want the price to go up to a thousand, although that's really nice. That's just my opinion. 
And um, I haven't been in school to that, but I watch stuff, you know? And so I would say that your, your long-term deal, if you're doing one or two presentations a week, you're right on track. If you're doing three to five presentations a week, you're gonna be a leader. If you're doing 10 presentations a week, you are a leader. Your results just haven't shown up yet. And it all depends on your actions. Your actions will be, depend on your belief. And your belief will depend on how much you're engaged in what's going on. How much you talk to your leader, what you're doing. You know, if you're talking to Dennis or you're talking to Brian or you're talking to whoever your leader is, get the best information that you possibly can as often as you can. And I tell people all the time, don't do all the talking, just get the walking done. Talking doesn't get it done. Talk to yourself, that's fine if you need to. And I would recommend that you put together some uh, sayings for yourself that you say, I can do this, this is great. The people I talk to will understand it. I will have the biggest business someday. I will have a thousand agents. I will have 500, whatever it is. I will have a hundred agents. My mission is to save a hundred starfish and I can only save them one starfish at a time. And every time I get an agent that come aboard that gets it, his eyes light up, I feel like I found a starfish that I saved. And then you start looking outside yourself. If money, when my wife and I used to play the what if game. What if we made $100,000 a year? And we started slow, what would we spend the money on? And the money would be gone in a couple of months. <laughs> and then I said, well, what if we made $100,000 a month? What would we spend the 100,000 on in January? What would we spend it? And we'd write it down. And they would say, okay, all right, now it's February, another 100,000, what do we do? Oh my God, all right, we do that. Then it's like, it's March, another 100,000. And we'd start playing with it. Well, we finally got up to, you know, what would happen if we made, you know, like four or 500,000 a month? It's hard to spend that, but you can do it. You know, and, and, and it comes, oh my God, it's coming next month again. And then again, and then again. And we played that one if game. We played it so many times that we believed it could happen. And then sure enough, it did. And so then what we started finding is, okay, we started realizing after we had our basic needs met, we want to take care of our relatives, our friends, our parents, our grandparents, if we're still around. Then we said, all right, if we can, we want to start taking care of other people, other things. That's why my wife and I set up a uh, foundation. I don't, maybe you want to do this. We set up a family foundation and we funded it with a few million dollars. And our first million dollars that we gave away was to my high school for the bottom 20% of the graduates, not the top, the bottom 20% for trade school scholarships. Love that. Right? And we're going to fund hundreds and hundreds of students to be able to get a trade and a skill so they can live life well. These are kids that families could never afford the five or $10,000 for the trade school, let alone a four-year college or a two-year you know, BS degree. It is BA degree. It, that was the most satisfying day. It was so exciting to be able to do that. And now they're coming back with, with the people and what they're doing and they're excited and they're going and we now have kids that have earned the scholarships that are starting this year and we're going to fund them for 10 years. You know, I'm excited about that. And we just made our second one, which was to a group that provides education for women and breast cancer. You know, we're looking for things to be able to affect as many people as we possibly can. And if you, if you take care of your own needs, you can start wanting to, if you're a person that this is the ones I want to deal with, people that are willing to give back. It's fun to do all the stuff we're doing, no question. But I really, I, I'm, I'm fulfilled by giving back. Well, that's what makes this model so great, Rob, is once you do get yourself to a point where you are comfortable and you feel financially and time free, the real fun is, and the real satisfaction is coming from helping other people. Yeah. And this is the best vehicle that most of us will ever see in our lifetimes to be able to affect lives in a positive way I'm a firm believer in charity. I'm a firm believer in upliftment, but I believe it's through economic upliftment. Um, and, uh, you know, we gave out 50 scholarships to real estate school and I don't have a fund yet that we're not raising money yet. That was out of pocket. We did just file for a 5013C, but, um, but that we are such believers 
in what we do. And that's what Rob, I think that's the biggest goal the nugget you shared is it all starts with your belief, your belief, your actions will depend on your belief. I wrote that down. And, and if we didn't believe this model could be like this, we wouldn't be here. If Glenn didn't believe in it, if we didn't all believe in each other, you know, I think that's why Rob still does what he does every day. Cause he believes in everybody. He believes in everybody in this room. You know, he could easily be flying around on a jet and, buying Italian cars and Italian shoes. And he, he's probably doing that anyway. You know, uh-huh. he's, he's doing that anyway. But, but this is what it's all about. This is what makes this model so great. You know, if I didn't believe in this model, I never would have had Grant and Glenn get on the phone together. You know, I, I just believed Glenn would be able to close them. You yeah, know, I okay, literally I knew if I could get these guys on the phone together, he would look at our model and he'd make the right decision. We didn't yeah. give Grant Cardone anything. We didn't. Hey, Pretty powerful stuff. Here. I will tell you what's happened now, Brian, is that there's three basic things, and this is my future, what I'm really working on, right? The first thing was to teach people how to make money, and that's what you do by building your rev share, selling houses, and make learning to make money. The second thing is learning to duplicate and make that money multiply. So you got a lot of little, little soldiers working for you. And the third component is to help you protect and hold on to the money, right? Because once you got money, everybody wants it, including the IRS. So what you've, what you've got to make money first, then you've got to learn how to multiply it, then you've got to learn how to protect it. And the, uh, what Brian talked about, I've got a group of people that will help you multiply. And I'm, I belong to an investment group that I will tell you, um, I've already, I make seven figures a year with them as well outside of EXP. My goal has been to make as much money outside of EXP as I do within EXP. And so I'm, I'm a member of a group and I, and I have recommended, not everybody, but I will tell you to get together with the people that I get together with, which are billionaires in the tech industry, um, really, really exciting to be able to multiply your money and then to learn to keep and protect it and hold on to it. Part of that is, um, your entity structure. Part of that is your uh, defined benefits plan. Part of that is where you live in taxes, what you do, because taxes are your biggest expense that you will ever have. And, um, and I'm really, really working on those three for my leaders. Once they're making a certain amount of money, I want to talk to them about those things. Because making money is one thing, multiplying it and keeping it is another. And that's how you build legacies that's how you fund not only your life and your kid's life and your grandkids life, but your great grandkids, you know, as well. We've started setting up trust for grandkids. We don't have any great grandkids yet, but I'm sure that'll happen someday. Right now we're just in the grandkid area. And um, it's unbelievable what you can do to bless other people's lives that we believe they're not even born yet. Just like I said to my daughter, I said, your lifestyle depends on realtors that are not even born yet. Because there are realtors, after we've been in business for 25 years or more, that's happened to me at Keller. I now get paid overrides, profit sharing from Keller on agents that were not even born yet when I had that talk with my daughter. And once EXP is around for 25 or 30 years, like some of these other companies, we'll be able to say, these agents were not even born yet when you're when you had that conversation with your kids, it. and it's the truth and building a legacy. That's what it's all about. It. Well, thank you. Anyway, Rob. I've, I've got to run. I appreciate your time. Wow. Thanks for staying around, Rob. I know you only had thirty minutes for us, so we appreciate the full yeah. hour. Well, I was able to get my team to move some <laughs> things and postpone stuff. As soon as I knew Brian was on here, I knew I was going to need some extra time. <laughs> well, Rob, thank you for all that you've done for yeah. us. My family, Thank you, the company, That's great. you know, the, 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 the stuff that you deliver and, and on a daily basis is so valuable. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm mind blown every time I talk to you. So thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Brian. I Thanks, enjoy Rob. hearing you talk too. I told you that. I heard a couple <laughs> of your interviews and you've got it, you've got it going now, man. I'm proud of what you're doing. I learned from the best. I learned what from the you're best. Doing, yeah. And Dennis, thanks for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for making it happen. Take pleasure. care. Bye, Rob. Bye-bye. All righty. So, Brian, I'd like you to meet Jay. <laughs> Everybody, please meet Jay Nyo. He's out of California. He is uh, one of our other 
uh, masterminds today. And um, I'll let Jay go through his alphabet soup of uh, who he is, what he does. It's uh, quite extensive. And I, I promise one of these days I will memorize it all. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Brian, pleasure meeting you finally. Uh, we're going back and forth a little bit, but just never actually seen each other in person. So pleasure. Nice I absolutely could not step in when Rob was speaking. I mean, Rob was only supposed to be there for 30 minutes. I'm looking at the clock and I was like going back and forth with everybody. I was like, uh, he's still talking. <laughs> <laughs> he is a train that once he gets going, you can't simply stop. So lots of information in there that the went through. Amazing, amazing, amazing information. Uh, Honestly, a lot of the stuff that he said, uh, I heard for the first time myself, and it just resonated. And here's the thing. I'm already with EXP, but after listening to him, I want to join again. Right. Right? Yeah. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am based out of California. I happen to be a real estate broker, a mortgage broker, and insurance broker. I came, obviously, to EXP via, uh, well, I went, I went directly through corporate and uh don't necessarily have a sponsor, but the most important thing at this point in time is I did pick a special one who actually is my sponsor. Uh, in fact, that person is actually on this call today. Uh, my background extend back about 18 years or so. Uh, started off as a real estate broker. After two years, I dove into the mortgage side of thing. And then fast forward about 12 years or so, jumped into the insurance side of things. So, that's, so I have a couple of other businesses outside of EXP that I do operate. The... The magical thing about EXP is that as I am sitting here to, with you today, I've only been here for less than a year. And yet uh, the family, the, the obviously the connections, has been amazing at this point in time. Uh, I've connected with everybody at this point in time that, you know, that frankly, just everybody who has uh, reached out has been awesome at this point in time. What I'm looking to do and what I have done so far is very dynamically different than I think what Brian has done and generally what Rob has done. Back when probably Rob and Brian started, there wasn't really a, a finance aspect to what we do. Uh, fast forward to today, especially the last two years or so, we have something called Introland. And so I'm heavily involved on that side as well. Uh, I am involved in multiple parts of EXP, EXP Realty, EXP Commercial, Introland, and a few other things as well. But the with the addition of Introland, I'm finding myself as far as the recruitment effort, as far as agent attraction effort, it's been almost magical and seamless as far as how things come along. Uh, frankly, there's just so much information right now out there regarding EXP as a whole and what we offer. I mean, what we do is amazing. But to be able to layer now additional information in pertaining to what we do as far as the finance side and attracting new additional type of superstars. Uh, I obviously have a finance background and what I'm seeing these days is there's a lot of people who actually have my similar background where they do both real estate and finance. Back then, this is one of them, my, this gentleman to call here. And what I'm seeing at this point in time is that when I get into a situation where I'm doing a call, it's frankly not even talking about EXP anymore, even though that is the core and that is the target reason. But I'm finding myself talking about finance and everything, all the other stuff that EXP is involved in way beyond even just EXP realty. That in itself, if you layer and combine everything, it just makes, honestly, as far as bringing agent to EXP, almost a no-brainer. Uh, I don't even need to sell EXP. EXP is selling itself just by simply, if you have any knowledge of the business model. So for me, the way that I approach things, very different, like I said, than Rob or, or Brian at this point in time. I come in and I'm just looking at it and just trying to find what the value is. Most of the people who are coming to me these days are actually coming from actually the finance side of all things. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was uh, lucky enough to be on a, a few different presentations, large presentations, 20, 30, 40, 100 people at a time. And in those particular meetings, I was in front of a bunch of uh, Remax agents and uh, Better Home and Garden agents in California. And I mean, simply by the mere fact that we're talking about Interland, people are obviously you know going to look up what Interland is, and eventually they're going to find that connection with EXP. And of course, there was a handful of people who actually did look up, look up EXP, look up Introland, and then also looked up me as well and realized that I was somehow linked to EXP. Uh, I had a few questions why I was doing the presentation. And of course, you know, that was not the place or the time to discuss that. But immediately after those meetings, had a handful of people reach out to me and say, hey, listen, Jay, like learn more about EXP. Didn't even talk about EXP. So I think, you know, if you look at ESG's path going from the very beginning to where it is today, frankly, you don't really even need to sell it. 
it, it's already out there in the public. People know who we are at this point in time. And just like Brian said, we're going to continue to grow as far as where we're at now. Um, right, so people are looking at, who am I going to partner with? I know all about EXP, but who who's the right partner for me to take me to that level? Is, is it Jay? Correct. And what is he offering? Well, he's offering, you know, he's connected with uh, the finance part, the insurance part. Man, he's going to make my life easy selling selling properties. Yeah, a, a, lot, a lot of what it is, is, you know, obviously we have a great platform to go off of. But at the end of the day, there's always additional tools that we can obviously integrate and plug into. Uh, in my case, I do operate a team as well inside of EXP. Right now, we're currently up to 32 team members right now. And we're frankly just killing it right now. And uh People who I think who have an interest in working with directly with us or our team usually find that because of the way we're structured inside, I guess you can, for lack of a better way of saying it, is really we are brokerage inside of a brokerage. And the fact that we have all the tools at our disposal and to be able to plug everything in the way that we are, it just makes what we do that much more efficient and that much just more connected. And I'm again, going back to what I was saying earlier, I'm just seeing people come to us simply because they're looking at us and become very impressed upon as far as what we do and realize, hey, listen, they have a good system here. But now they have not just a good system, but they have a whole strategy behind it as well. Well, and, they also and, get and you as a with, coach, right? And that, they get that, you as a coach. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 I do belong to a fairly large group uh, as far as uh, yeah group at this point in time. In fact, I think there's about maybe a third of us in here from this group here. I belong to the uh, Bob Mango group, and uh, that's a fairly good group. Uh, we have about 900 agents in there, strong at this point in time. I am one of the coaches. There's about 22 of us at, at this current moment, but yeah, they do get me as a coach. They do get the access to the other coaches as well as they join our group. But then beyond that, it's not just about the whole coach thing. It's also the actual team connection. In fact, you know, I have a few team members right now in here as well, where we are able to connect with everybody, get really, you know, on, on a, frankly, at the same level as the agent. And whether they're new or experienced, we have the ability to really train them properly or take them from the beginning all the way up. So for us, it's really a spectacular things to see, to be able to step back and just take it all. I mean, today, look at that. We had we had Rob on the, on, the, on the line with us here. We have Brian on the line here. Next week and a few other weeks coming down the road, Dennis and I have a few other big names lined up for us as well going forward. So for us, it's it's really connecting all the people through our relationship. Uh, last week, we had an interesting gentleman who came on board, Trey, who was talking about how everything we do here is not necessarily, it is about real estate, but at the same time, more importantly, it's really about the connection. The relationship. What can you do? The relationship, exactly. Yep. That's more important than anything else. People don't work with other people because they have a good tool or a good system all, all by itself. The other part is, which is I think probably more even more important, is the relationship behind what we have here. So I think that's a critical part of what we do. And I think as we continue to grow, I think that's going to be even more and more center stage as we go forward. Huge, for sure. And, you know, I, I had written down, um, of course, a bunch of stuff that Rob was saying you know, trying to get his nuggets, but work. One of the things he said is if you work on your first three levels of people, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. again, that goes back to your, your coaching and, and, you know, right. the involvement that you have with your people, right. That's take care of them, help to show them how, right. to, how to replicate what you do. Yeah. And, no, frankly, listen, compared to Brian and, and Rob, I'm the new kid in the block. I mean, I, I, I'm i a baby, an infant compared to them. There's no there's no question about that. And in fact, you know, uh, the other day, you know, I started looking at Rob, and I was like, you know, I bow down to you, Rob. Amazing stuff. You know, there's really nothing that I you know need to say at this point in time. Both Rob and Brian, obviously, they're their, uh, you know, their reputation speaks loudly uh, without them even having to say a word. And for all of us and a lot of us in this group here or this meeting right now, Frankly, we strive for that too. And, you know, once you get to a point where you can make these connections and to be able to leverage those connections, and certainly, you know, uh, just a few moments ago, you know, Rob was saying how he was working with certain people and helping his so-called generals. But yeah, you know, right. to be able to step up to that platform and to work with Rob and to be able to be considered his general, not quite there yet myself, but <laughs> to be able to be there, that is going to be something again the word here is magical because the truth is people like that can make you grow just by simply being connected and working with his people yeah it's that and, simple and, yeah and, and what's so magical about about rob's passion for helping others find what it is that is going to you know 
like he said, finance that 10 plus plus, you know, write it down. What mm-hmm. is it that's mm-hmm. going to do it? And then he's still out there. Right. He doesn't have to do it. He doesn't have to do it anymore. Right. He, he can just sit on the beach, you know, wherever he yeah. wants, anywhere in the world, jump on the jet, the boat, but he's still right. out there doing it and building, building these businesses uh, for people. And it's just, it, it's, it's staggering. It blows my mind that, uh, you know, he still has that passion to do it. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's, uh, you know, here's the thing, what he's doing is amazing. Uh, and, and truthfully from what I can see, or at least what I can evaluate uh, as you continue to do this, it just becomes much more effortless as things start to build and grow. Uh, you know, he said himself, you know, building the first one to three level, uh, level. Yeah. It takes work. It takes dedication. But once you get it, once you let it go beyond that, it's just kind of, you know, take on his life of his own and start to do his own thing. And yeah, that's where, where the magic happens. Yeah. Well, apparently I mean, 40,000 deep, but you know, so far beyond level seven that, right. uh, you know, that's, that's a lot right. of people below level seven. Yeah, no, that's, that, that, I mean, I, honestly, you know, I didn't know he was up to 17,000, but I was just listening to that. I was like, okay, never mind. That's, that's a <laughs> huge number. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you say to yourself, you know, one of these days when I grow up, that's who I want to be. <laughs> that's, yeah. Not, not a bad, not a bad uh, role model for yeah, sure. Yeah. With that being said, uh, I just want to throw this out there. So uh, going forward, there's, and again, everybody who's attending today, I would love to have everybody back. Both Dennis and I would have to have everybody back going yeah, forward. Uh, we are planning to bring in some huge names. As I said, obviously starting off right off the bat, last week, Trey, this week we have, uh, you know, Brian and Rob, you know, you can't get really bigger than that, <laughs> but, but we okay, still have some start. huge names. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So we would love to have everybody back and we'll, if, if anybody who wants to join us for the next uh, few uh, sessions and we were trying to space this out every two to three weeks or so and if anybody would like to join us and be a part of this we would love for you to just drop your information uh, via email to us uh, dennis would you mind putting our your your email there so we can that i can reach out to you yeah yeah brian by the way i know you're on mute right now thank you so much for being part of this uh i i, I can see that you're super leisure and relaxed right now i hope the ac is on over there <laughs> Listen, we don't survive without AC out here. Um, uh, yeah. No, I appreciate you guys doing this. And I, I, I want to say one thing about what you just said, Jay. Yeah. You know, obviously you've got leaders like Rob, Brent, you know, mm. I mean, to even put me in that category. Okay, fine. You know, but um, <laughs> but uh, don't compare yourself to, to, to those guys and gals, right? The, the first couple, I mean, even Glenn, you know, I do, you know, but you yeah. got to stop. Like I have to watch myself because you know there was a time where i used to say if i could just make 10 grand a month that would be life-changing you know first of all a thousand dollars a month for a lot of people is life-changing you know that's your that's your mortgage payment or that's a couple car payments uh, you Mm -hmm. know that's a semester of school you know and then to get to ten thousand, that's like mind-blowing like that's top five percent of all network marketing you know, mm-hmm. marketers in the world don't make that much money a month. And then you got, you know, and then it's like, and then now I'm like, if I don't make a million a month, I'm nobody, you know, I'm terrible, you know, so you got to watch it, right? You know, just right. those guys are closing in on a million a month. <laughs> um, that's the potential, but there will be people that are on this call today that haven't even joined EXP. They could go on and build that kind of a business for themselves. I mean, if you, if you just oh, yeah. do the numbers and yep. you think about some of that, a million, let's even cut it in half and make it half a million global. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that means we're less, there's 90% of the future of this company has yet to join and they're right. going to join under somebody. Why not somebody on this call today? That's right. Yeah. right. And it doesn't take thousands of people to make thousands of dollars a month, mm-hmm. right? It, t- right? it takes a handful. You know, Rob, I mean, one of the craziest stats is Rob's only brought in two people a month. Yeah, that's, that's, that's brilliant. That's crazy. That's crazy low. And I'll tell you why. I mean, that was, that was the old, that was the six minute mile, right? <laughs> but then Elena came over. She's now brought in a person. She brought in, she's averaging five people a week. Okay? Wow. So she's a little less than a person a day. She brought in a girl named, but now you're like, well, she's famous. Okay, fine. <laughs> she brought in <laughs> Claudia and Hibbard. Claudia and Hibbard, again, building on the backs. You know, once you see somebody do it, then My the dam be- bursts. Right. So, so like the, those early leaders, you know, there's only one Rob Flick. There's only one Gene Frederick, you know, those guys, they invented this game, 
you know, they, they set this whole thing up. They taught us how to do it, but, but they're the, you know, the, there's going to be people who are going to take what they figured out, add mm-hmm. some of this other fuel, grab some stuff from Jay, some stuff from Dennis, and they're going to go, cool, let me put this into a, a lab and see what I can come up with. And boom, they're going to be adding yep. a, pe- a person a day. Right. And that's yeah, like Claudia. She's out level. of nowhere. She's right. adding a person a day. I have a girl in my organization out of Miami. She's adding a person. But she's doing three, four Zoom calls a day. She's doing lunch and learns every week. She's doing it all. But they implement. And that's what you'll see. The people that are doing this well do mm-hmm. it nonstop. Yep, yep. And the truth of the matter is the people who are showing up in today's call alone right here, there's obviously some aspiration of there's trying to get there every somewhere. Every person on this call, Absolutely. just being on this call makes them a leader right. in this organization. And they, every one of them has a right to go on and build a million dollar a year business. For themselves. Guys, you're awesome. I could do this. I, I, invite me back anytime. I got to hop. I got kids getting ready to crash through the door. And, <laughs> All right, Brian. Uh, Brian. Thank you for showing up. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for thank your time. You guys and everybody on the call, thank you for being my partner. Appreciate you. Have a great day. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, everybody. Uh, when you get a chance, if you want to uh, get the schedule for the next lineup for the for the next uh, several months, actually, do us a favor. Just shoot an email out to David, uh, Dennis, I'm sorry. Uh, his email is right there in the chat. Uh, just go ahead and hit him up, send an email, and we'll be more than happy to get yeah. everybody Plus, a with counter, everybody's but... permission, um, when they sign up for Zoom, I have their email addresses, so I'll definitely keep them. That's true, yeah. Uh, as long as they signed up through Zoom, I'll be able to, to get, it, get it out to them. And also, um, this was recorded. I think this is going to get a lot of traction. I know I'm going to have to listen to it a couple more times because I wasn't writing down. I wanted to keep my eyes forward. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's been recorded. It went out to um, – Facebook and it also went out to YouTube. So right, and uh, the recording is going to be put uh, be up and available. I think by hopefully by the end of today. Um, yeah. the, at the agents at uh, on the agent circle. Okay, so we'll nice. get that information out to everybody's emails. That's that we have. Excellent. Right now. All Beautiful right. Stuff. Thank you everybody for showing up. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Time, really appreciate it. Have a good day, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good seeing you, Terry.